you get the shield. What if what you have is all you get and you don't get no more? What, what if they're not giving out more than what we're going to do? How many of you know that if you had your life to live over again, you could do more than what you've done? That was the point. That what we do and what we accomplish in life is only the tip of the iceberg of what's possible for us. Based on all the evidence we have, we estimate you have 30 days to I refuse to die an unlived life. Because you're either dying or you're growing. So which way are you going? 
Because you can either take off and stay fly like a Boeing, or fall down from the sky like it's snowing. Are you putting yourself all in? Or have you just dipped your toe in? Because I can always guarantee that it's going to take more low effort than you're currently putting in right now to get through this that you want to be. So the question is, where is it that you want to be? I'm mean, like I said, we've got to recognize within ourselves that wherever we just want to be is going to be different to everybody. I remember what it's like being in year 11. That's me in year 11, many years ago. And I'm sure a lot of your staff remember what it's like being in year 11. Just ask them. Because one thing I need you to understand is that right now you're in year 11, but that's just going to go like that. Raise your hand if you remember being in year 10 by a show of hands. Remember, if you remember year 10, raise your hands. If you remember year 9, raise your hands. If you remember year 7, raise your hand. I remember year 7. Because what you need to understand is that time goes just like that. And if I was to ask you a question, if I said to you to raise your hand yesterday, you can't do it. If I told you to raise your hand tomorrow, you can't do it. If I told you to raise your hand now, you can't do it. Because now is the only time that we have. Because a lot of problem is not just young people, a lot of problem with adults too, we forget that now is the only time that we have. It's very, very easy to think that, oh right, I'm just 16, I've got lots of time in the world. But the reality is that you don't. They say that the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. And the second best time to plant a tree is right now. That's why I love what Eric Thomas says. Eric Thomas says that now is an acronym. N-O-W stands for no opportunity wasted. Absolute no opportunity wasted. Because every day there's opportunities around us, but how many of them are you wasting on a day-to-day -day basis because you think you have time? A lot of us, if you think we have time, I remember being 16, look, there's me at 16. That's me at 16. I remember, I remember, I remember standing there smiling like this. Can you see the smile, right? Same smile, right? You know what I'm saying? Now, this is me playing football when I was six. Now, this is a bit when I was like year 10, maybe. Can you guess who trusts me? <laughs> Someone said, oh, somebody's goalkeeper. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the goalkeeper. Yeah, I'm right there. I was a bad boy striker, you know? Nobody laughed at me. I can't not make you okay. I used to be a big boy footballer. If Man United is down there, they're going to scout me. <laughs> but then this is where the dark side comes in. Can I be open with you? Yes or no? Can I be open? Yeah. You want to know the real me? You want to know how I got to where I am right now? Not too long ago, this is me. So, can we get light for this, please? <laughs> Not too long ago, this is my life. I used to ride on the back of buses like this. I used to be an angry kid. At 16, I was angry. I didn't smile much. I went from this in 3 or 2008 to being like this in 3 or 2009. If you want to know the truth, a lot of people talk yeah. about the road side, a lot of people talk about they're bad, they think they're bad. I can assure you that it's nothing like that. Do you have any idea what it's like when a guy pulls out a knife and tries to take your life from your front door? I could have died in my front door, but my dad was by my side in my front door. So the guy picked up his bike and pulled away his knife, so I was too life saved on my front door. Because some of you take it for a joke. When I was your age, I had people coming for my life. Do you have any idea what it's like people trying to kill you on your front door? And some of you think it's a joke. And why? Why was I like this? I think the people I was around. They say you're an average of the five people you hang around with most. That was me. That was the second night I got arrested that night, funny enough, that picture. The other people in the picture, he went to prison for two years. This guy in the back, he's still in prison doing seven years. You need to understand that it's not a joke out there. You have to take him serious from now. Because while you're out there playing, someone else is taking the opportunity which has been there for you. But there's a bright side to this. I'm still standing here today to tell you this story. I eventually went to university. Fortunately, I went to university in Manchester. I went to Manchester Met, did my degree in psychology. 
I graduated with a first class honours degree. So just put that into perspective with you, that's like doing your GCSEs and getting an A star all across the board. I also got published in the process. So I'm like, now I'm academic author, so I'm put it there. Again, put that into perspective with you, just like you write a book and get the name in front of you. After I finished that, I then became elected vice president of my student seniors and come from my university. Again, put that into perspective with you. That's why you right now being a teacher of your school, making it running everything. Now I've started now saying, hey, working for myself, being self-employed. So I've been self-employed now for the last time. So there you go. Get Charlie Slots on there, Charlie Slots. Who break out for your Charlie Slots? I know Charlie Slots. I always number my phone. Charlie Slots takes me happy to hear every now and then. You know what I'm saying? That's now the issue I put myself in. So I run this events management company here. I get people out in the house for me, general past celebrities. Also been in the papers. You know, so again, it's a much, much different predicament to what most of my friends are in. Most of my friends are putting in the papers because of mug shots. I'm going to be a big fan like this. Again, that's nothing like a mug shot, right? I'm happy. Like this. So I'm putting in my speeches, my health healing, and my bed talk like this. But that was what you to say locally. Because on a national scale, I've been all over the BBC. You can Google me if you want to. I've been viral on Twitter, I've been flipping Victoria Darby and stuff like that. This is the down the road in the school group. Me and me, by the edge, you guys went. You know what I'm And because of that lifestyle, I've been watching where I've had a lot of traveling. Most of the people I've brought with, they're not allowed to use the blues and punch because of their records. So I'm very, very fortunate right now, I've been able to travel the world. This is me in Europe, I think this is in like Slovakia, this is in like Vienna, I'm all of the to get a picture of me sitting, so they don't always look like this. But every, everyone gets to sleeping every now and again. This is me in America last summer, I went to Miami Beach. Ready to have anyone been to America before? America, where did you go? Nothing you uh, say can break me down. Oh, Florida, okay, cool, you're Florida, I went to Miami. Taking selfies with the guys in Florida, Beverly Hills. When I was there, Kanye West is um, Kanye West there at the same time outside the Gucci store. It was crazy, I tried to see him, but he didn't let me. Been to Washington, standing on the same spot where Martin Luther King did I have a Jewish speech. Raise your hand if you know that I have a Jewish speech. Yes, yeah? so I've been fortunate enough to stand on the exact same spot that Martin Luther King did that. I've also been fortunate enough to go to Australia. So take yourself to the camera. Skydiving. Anyone done skydiving before? Here's the thing what they never tell you about skydiving. Believe it or not, yeah, you can actually go skydiving without a parachute. Only once. Yeah. So if you surf, surf is a fun skateboard, but you get more of a surf. And you know also get to surf. So the question that you need to ask yourself is, how did I go from this position here in 2009 to get to here today? How did I make that transition? Like I said, today is all make about making a transition. So every single one of you has a transition to make. Your past might have not been as dark as mine. You might have not had people coming through your life. You might have not been in cells in your life. So whatever your transition, everyone is different, but you still have a transition that you need to make. My transition just started here in 2009. And today, I'm here. <laughs> so today's all about making that transition. So how are you going to make that transition? That's the question you need to ask yourself. So I want everybody to close your eyes. Close your eyes. Make I want you to think just of this question. It's very, very important that every single person has clarity in what it is they want. When I was your age, I never understood how poor it was to set myself a target. When I was your age, I didn't understand how poor it is to set myself goals. So ask yourself, what is it that you really want? What is it that you want to achieve in your life? At 16 years old, it's now time to make those decisions. Or if you can't think of it, what you actually really, really want, think about what you don't want. What do you not want to have in your life? For me, I wasn't necessarily clear about what it is I did want. I just knew what I didn't want, and I just didn't want to be poor anymore. I didn't want to be in a position where I had no money. So take 
take a few moments to think about what it is that you really want. The clearer you get on this, the easier it is to get to your goals. So really ask yourself this burning question. You want to ask yourself this on a daily basis. What is it that I want? I always recommend to people, when you get in, write yourself a list of 100 things you want to do before you die. Or 100 things that you want to achieve. And it's those people in the here who take this more seriously are those people who are going to get ahead of our people sitting next to you. You need to understand that the only difference between being ordinary and being extraordinary is doing that little bit extra. So which ones of you are going to take that extra step to where it is that you want to be? These are the questions that you need to be asking yourself on a daily basis. Right now we're in October, you finish sometime in June, July. That time's going to fly past you. So always ask yourself, what is that you really want to achieve? And that's the video. Thank you. So now you've had a little taste of this what you call this what you just did now? We like to call this visualization. Imagine what it is that you do want to achieve. And I honestly recommend to you to sit down every single day and ask yourself these questions. What is that you want to achieve? Or if you struggle to do that, what is it you don't want? So for me, I didn't want to be poor anymore. So ask yourself that question on a daily basis. However, that's all up here in your thoughts. That's your thoughts. Well, you need to understand that your thoughts over here don't necessarily match the reality over here. Let me give you an example. Your thoughts, what you just thought about now, your thoughts, the things you want to achieve, they lead to your feelings, to the way that you feel, which then leads to your actions, how you're going to action that task, which then leads to your results. So let me, can I get four volunteers, please, just to demonstrate this? Picture of hands, four people just come up. One, two, three. three. I need one more person, four, come up. Everyone give them a massive round of applause as they come down. So again, the quicker you can understand this principle I'm about to demonstrate to you, the quicker it's going to be for you to succeed. I only realised this principle in my 20s, and I've got to where I am today. Me and Charlie Sop, if that impresses you. So if you can fathom and get your head around this idea today at 15, 16 years old, you're going to be get much further than me at quicker time. So here's what I'm going to ask them to do. Again, thank you guys. So I want you to be here. You're going to be my thoughts, okay? You're going to be feeding, so spread out, so you're going to be results over there. So you can stand up in front of your white board. Okay, cool. You're going to need to get my wall for one second. Okay then, so like we said, if your thoughts on a day-to-day -day basis are here, what's your name? Asher. Asher. So Asher now is he's imitating thoughts. But at the end of the day, in life, you want to get the results. Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you want to get good results? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? Yes. Thank you. So if you do want to get the results over here, what's your name? Sanya. So if you want to get the results that Sanya is, how are we going to do that? So actually, if you pass the ball over, could your thoughts lead to your feelings? Because depending on how we think, influences how we feel. So let me give you an example. Some people wake up, they hear, their, they hear their alarm clock when they're sleeping, sorry, and they don't feel like waking up. Their thoughts tell them, I don't want to wake up, and their feeling is, I don't want to wake up. Your thoughts lead to your feelings, and the way you feel leads to your, leads to your what? Actions. Pass the over. <laughs> so the way you feel, the way you feel, then leads to your actions. If you're feeling happy, you're more likely to do something, right? Yes or no? Yes. If you're feeling sad, you're not going to do it. If you feel like you're not in the mood, if you've got homework to do, I don't feel like doing my homework, you're not going to act on it. Yes or no? Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes. So if we know now that we need to act on it, so how do we get to our results? Thoughts so these actions, these are your results. Yes or no? <coughs> so let's recap one more time. So our feelings lead to your, sorry, sorry, you're right, thank you. Your thoughts lead to your 
Release your. Release your. Let's pause for the few of the pool. Have you it down? Let's do it so at the same time. <laughs> so our fourth lead to our. Lead to our. Wait to our. Climbed out of the wells. 
So the question I now ask you is that in life, when people are throwing dirt on your back, when you have them haters or the naysayers throwing dirt on your back, are you just going to let it rest there, let them bury you in that well? Yes. <laughs> or are you going to step on it and allow yourself to climb up and up and up again to get out? My next principle is uniqueness. Now this is so, so, so important. I always tell people, why fit in when you're born to stand out? Because to be outstanding, you have to stand out. Does that make sense? Why fit in when you're born to stand out? Because to be outstanding, you have to stand out. You get that, right? But you need to understand it's like, we're all human beings, two arms, two legs, etc. But the thing is out there when you get into the real world, when you get into the real world, only the people amongst you who stand out are going to be the ones who succeed. If you're just like everybody else, if you're going to a job and your CV is just like everybody else, why are they going to employ you? Why are they going to give you the job? You're just like everybody else. So what can you do to make you unique? What can you do to help you to stand out? Finding that drive. What is going to use to drive you? What do you do this for? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why is it that you do what you do? For me, I look at it in the fact that, right, I'm the oldest of four siblings. My sister's got a niece, they rely on me. So what is it that gets you out of bed in the morning? Are you doing it for your parents? You want to work hard for them? So you need to find that drive. What is it that's going to push you? Last bit, relentless. You have to be relentless. It's going back to being rage again. Just be absolutely relentless in everything you do. Don't be kind out there. Be savage with it. Just, just go savage with it. Of course, in a nice way. But don't, don't let anyone take your kindness for weakness. You have to go out and, and own it. If you want something to go out there and own it, just grab what you want. I always say, you know what they say, you just grab the ball by the horns? They told you to grab, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know how I tell you to grab the ball by the horns? I say don't grab the ball by the horns, put him in a headlock. Put him straight in the headlock and squeeze. Do you know what I'm saying? Just own it. Whatever it is you want, just own it. You deserve it. Why do you let anyone else take it away from you? Same kind of thing, be audacious with it. You have to be bold out there. You have to be. You're not kids anymore, you're 16. And some of you are still acting like kids, then what is the point? Grow up. You have to be bold, be audacious out there. It's that time now. You're getting into the real world. Gregarious. Now this is a bit of a word you might have not come across before. It's all about being social out there. Because one thing I've realised that helped me get to where I am today, is that you can't do it alone. I love the quote that they say, no man is an island. So when I saw myself to be absolute rage, I me telling myself I've got to be gregarious, I've got to be social out there. Because a lot of things I've managed to achieve right now just because of the people I've networked with. And finally, you've got to have excellence. You've got to have pride in everything that you do. For me, I'll be embarrassed if I was you. I'll be, I'll be embarrassed to hand in a piece of work with my name on it if it was crap. Have some pride in the things you do. Why would you put a, why would you put a name to somebody that is, is not at least minimum of excellence? So when I say minimum, you want to be minimum relentless, minimum audacious, minimum gregarious, and you want to have minimum excellence in everything you do. Oh, well, what is the point? Why, why do you think half hearted? You'd be wasting your time. So with that, I just want to say thank you for your time. If you have any, if you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.